You guys excited to find out what on earth this actually is? Yeah. All right. Let's play you the video first. And hope it works. On board the Celestia are six of the most dangerous criminals from across the universe. These violent individuals serve as my team. Thrasher. Penny. Ralea. PS5. Laterra. Agents. Our mission, to find and bring down Discord, no matter the cost. Unit Dragonfire reporting. My team calls me leader, but you can call me Spike. At the very beginning of a panel, you introduce yourself. That might help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, hi, I usually go by SK9. Um, What's going on, guys? My name's Nick, I'm a writer. And I'm Minty Root. I'm Picapedi. And he's Picapedi's here just because he's Petey. Yeah, I've got this here just because. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you were the director on that project. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, yeah, so basically, um, a year ago, there was an April Fool's joke um, by, that came out on YouTube for the Hub, I think it was, or whoever. Um, and it seemed like a really fun idea, and I just kind of wanted to make it a lot more original, just bring in different characters, and as you kind of saw, the six main elements were still there, but it's really just a totally different story. You get to see it in a whole new light and follow the characters through you know, much, or, I don't know what I want to say. <laughs> um, yeah, um, if you like, I can talk a little, bit, yeah, a little bit more about each character, kind of what they're like. Um, yeah, why don't you go ahead and do that? Okay, so I'll go here, and I'll just uh, show each one so you know who I'm talking about here. Okay, this one. This is... Um, there's Drasher. She's just kind of a brute. She's very aggressive, very hot-tempered. Um, she's really easy to get angry, and she's more likely to just start and start going in to hit people rather than actually thinking about anything. Um, I really should have wrote stuff down for this. I'm not a smart person. <laughs> this is Penny. Um, she's insane. She's just absolutely psychotic, um, danger, violence, all that. She just finds it to be fun and hilarious. She'll run into battle not thinking at all and just be smiling and laughing the entire time. Um, Relia is, she's a bit more sophisticated one. Um, she's kind of passive aggressive. Um, she's not very strong, but she's really fast and she's always paying attention to what's going on around her. Um, 
to my life. <laughs> As Peter gives out drawings. <laughs> TS5, um, she's a fully sentient robot um, and the only one of her model made um, basically because she's killed everyone that was involved in her creation. She's pretty smart um, and she can lay out a good plan for attack, but uh, if it doesn't work, she has more than enough firepower to back it up because at the openings of her wrists and ankles, she has this special little energy that she can compile into just about anything. Flatera is, she's just a very shy and kind of meek little jelly blob. Um, it will allow her to change shape, but she usually just kind of stays in her little goofy, goofy little jelly shape. Um, no one really knows, except her and Spike, why she's on the Celestia, um, so a lot of them kind of give her a hard time. Um, but she always still remains really happy, really kind, really friendly, and will eventually be revealed why she's actually there. <laughs> And this one is just, she's a tiny little, cute little fairy. Um, she's much smaller than everybody else. Um, she's usually really just nonchalant, doesn't really care what's going on. But uh, you call her cute and she absolutely snaps. She goes ballistic and is going to start tearing people apart. <laughs> and then, well, I don't have a picture of Spike. I never made one of that. But um, he's just kind of a really obsessive one. He's out to bring down Discord no matter what happens. Um, He's going to risk anything, anyone, to make sure it happens. So he's, he's kind of like Robin from the Teen Titans before they made it really goofy. Let's see. Anything else? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't plan. I'm not a smart person, I know. <laughs> well, you're probably too busy working on the um, opening ceremonies animation with me. Yeah, so. that, that took up a lot of time. Yeah, that... uh, do you guys, uh, did you guys go to opening ceremonies? Um, we're, I, he's, I was the director of that project and he was my assistant director and we cranked that out. Same time, he had this other pet project going on. He was finishing up for BronyCon. <laughs> yeah, just kind of trying to rush it out, trying to get it over here to give you guys you know, something to kind of look at, um, give you a general idea. Um, so this is just kind of base concept. Um, and you know, once, if it uh, gets any support, because I, I still have a full-time job, we're probably going to end up with uh, possibly doing other jobs um, too. So it's, there's not really any time to put into it right now. Um, but yeah, that's that's what the Patreon is for. Um, I just screwed up this caricature, but you, sir, I accidentally used the wrong color on your eyes, and it looks like you have black eyes now. But here you go. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. <laughs> I feel like I had something else I wanted to talk about, but I don't remember what it is. Uh, making of? What's that? Just the making of? No, no, something else. You just go in Q&A? Yeah, we can just do that. So anyone has any questions? Oh, uh, okay. Oh, we got a microphone right there. Yeah. So these reimaginings of these characters, are they meant to be like aliens or something? Alemau. What? Alemau. Alemau? Yep. What's that? <laughs> I don't either. Yeah, they're, they're basically aliens. They're all from different parts of the universe, so yeah, they're, they're basically aliens. They're not from Earth. Spike is. Spike's a person. He's a human. Yes? Hmm? What about Twilight Sparkle? Oh, that is essentially TS5, the, the robot, the smart and seemingly magical robot. <laughs> yes? Um, that's, his design is, um, hasn't really been worked out, uh, yet, but if it gets support, we're going to sit down, I'll be working with some people for character design, and, uh, yes? I was kind of thinking of that. I was kind of thinking of making him a bit more human, kind of, in that general area, so that's, it is possible. <laughs> yes?
Yeah, that would probably be good. We'll probably uh, <laughs> write that into there. Um, yes. Okay. Well, yeah. So basically, we have Discord is this kind of he's like the worst villain throughout the universe over there, um, and the Celestia is kind of like the biggest like it's their go-to ship and their like the entire army that's trying to stop him is on there, but they just have not been able to do it. Um, and they have a lot of high connections through the universe, so Spike comes up with a, what he believes to be a genius plan of bringing six of the most dangerous criminals on board that ship and having them work together to take Discord out. And in return for their work, they will be granted full pardon for all their crimes and set free. Yeah. I've never seen that movie. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. So if they're all criminals, what I think is Flutera? That is the entire point. She's kind of the wild card that no one really knows about on the ship except for her and Spike, so she's just kind of a little surprise later on. It'll be visually revealed on why she has been locked away. Yes? No, this is a work in progress. This was just quickly put together um, in a very short time just to kind of let you have something to, you know, visually see rather than just coming up and talking about it, which Obviously, I didn't plan that part very well, so <laughs> <laughs> it helps to have a little something to look at, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yes, sure. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, we don't have internet. Um, I didn't take it from there, um, so I don't have it with me. Um, but there wasn't much to that video. It was just kind of that general concept of that. Um, there was really, it was just kind of like a look of space and Spike kind of talking about Discord um, and, you know, they're gonna, their fight to bring down Discord. That was, that was pretty much all their promo was about. Yes. Unfortunately, I don't. I didn't think of doing that. Um, currently, I just have the um, Patreon, which is linked to a Vimeo, um, which the Vimeo is also um, just vimeo.com slash pk9. Pa yeah, PD, you got all the paper. Write that down. Oh. Or <laughs> she wanted me to draw her again, so there you go. <laughs> okay, what's the... Yep. Yes. All right. Um, um, between the opening ceremonies one, this, and a full-time job, um, it, it didn't take too long. Um, uh, maybe 80 to 150 hours, I'm not really sure. This is kind of ballpark guessing. Yeah, basically, basically what happened, uh, SK9 came to me and he was just like, dude, like, I had this idea for this like, um, elaborate animation project and I want to show you this. And I was like, uh, uh, okay. Um, so he showed me this and, and I was like, looks good. It looks like it can develop into something. So keep going. But in the meantime, I need you to be my assistant director on the BronyCon opening ceremonies. So, so we were both kind of just the last two and a half months were... Yep. Sporadic. Um, and then I, I was like, Minty Root, I need you to animate the whole thing. <laughs> and it's exactly what happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's that? Um, yes, all, all six, oh, you mean like background ponies or just the? Yeah, um, well, Luna might happen to be the captain of the Celestia. <laughs> yes.
Yes. Um, I mean, in between fighting, you know, because we're not, it's not just going to be all animated fighting all the time. There's going to be uh, plenty of just character interaction on the ship. You know, so you'll get to see more of how they all work together and how they kind of grow together. Anyone else? Yes. Um, currently, I'm just, uh, <laughs> I currently just work at a grocery store. Because like, I'm not good at anything else, I guess. But yeah, I work there about usually 40 plus hours a week, so it's a lot of time. And uh, me and Petey might end up having uh, some other jobs that we might need to animate things for, so that might cut into time. But yeah, it's 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 hard with a uh, working a crappy job and trying to make works of animation. Anyone else? No? Yes. Yeah, it'll be um, probably at the moment, in, like until we can hire more animators, would probably just be five to seven minute long episodes. Just keep putting out little ones like that. And if we get enough to have more animators, we'll probably develop it into a longer, you know, 10, 15, 22 minutes as, as that goes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a lost episode, like a, like, leaking episode, or? Oh, yeah, like the, the creepypasta things. Oh. <laughs> and it would still t uh, take the, some time yeah, to actually the, make one the of whole, those. The whole thing on that is um, the amount of time to create this lost episode would just be not worth it. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> the lost two second clip. The lost, the that's, lost gif. That's still 48 frames to draw. <laughs> I, it is, yeah. yeah for, it's the 48. <laughs> you mean magical mystery cure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, in the meantime, uh, Fluttershot guy. <laughs> 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 You're welcome. <laughs> okay, any other questions? <laughs> yes. Um, if it can be made, then yeah, it will be up on YouTube and probably also on Vimeo just to have locations. Um, well, with no support, um, it will take a very, very long time. <laughs> um, but uh, if it starts getting any support, um, first episode could be out probably in a couple months. Um, it all depends. And when they do come out on YouTube and stuff, they will obviously be free. Um, there won't be ads on them either. Just um. yeah. Um, I mean, 500 would be a good start just to cut back a lot on hours at work, and then I could really kind of start dedicating time to it. Uh, and then anything after that is just going to, I'll just keep cutting back on work until I can just work on it full time. And then after that, just hire more animators, more, keep, just keep hiring people. Yeah. Yes. Um, I know a couple of people. Um, I did do um, one of them in there, the little orange one. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So I already have these jigs all figured out. <clears throat> oh, God, my throat is dry. I'm sorry. It's kind of terrible. But anyway, yeah, I have that one set up, and then I know a few other people who could do it. I think you do that for several of them, like, yes. 
<laughs> Don't hate, that's mean. You're hurting my feelings. <laughs> it's harsh, bro. I know, jeez. <laughs> I'll go cry in the corner now. <laughs> Should incorporate button of somewhere in there. <laughs> I'm button mash and I'm the janitor. How's it going, guys? <laughs> okay. CN3, CND and 3, 2, 1. <laughs> I, can already, I can already hear Hasbro typing out that CND letter. <laughs> what? Someone's animating button mash? <laughs> I'm button mash and I've been CND'd. I ruined everything. <laughs> I'm gonna go drink my juice. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Um, well, I believe Discord, uh, Celestia, Luna, all those are like public domain names. Spike, I think I can just kind of sneak away with that because uh, it's just a character name. It's, yeah, it's actually, common. Uh, there's a um, uh, Chinese restaurant and they're a restaurant chain near my house, and they have a dragon named Spike, so yeah. <laughs> as their mascot. Well, yeah. that and as bro not caring about Spike at all, so. Yeah. That, that too, yeah. <laughs> we all know. Yeah, Aspro doesn't care about Spike. Yeah. Someone has Spike? Yeah, uh, so what? <laughs> I mean, we all have seen Spike episodes, they're just horrible. <laughs> Should I write the CND? No, who cares? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyone else? Mm. No? Yes. <laughs> Different spelling. <laughs> Let's see. Right, well, if no one has any other questions, I'm kind of out of ideas here. Uh, talk, talk a bit about yourself. Why did you, well, how did you get to start in meeting? Or um, I started animating, um, it was weird. I kind of went to Kineticon with my friend, um, and I had never really, like, I've heard of the show, and then um, we started seeing people like, oh, question, okay, that's probably better than my story. <laughs> I could probably do that. <laughs> and that was a great question, and here's your caricature. <laughs> I screwed up on the eyes and had to deal with it, so I made you yeah. super kawaii. <laughs> well, Dr. I don't see why you couldn't. I mean, there's plenty of room for all different types of character design. It's you know, the whole universe, so anything we want to really kind of put in there, design them up in their own kind of way, they could definitely show up and have something to do in there. Yeah. Yes. If you could have that series cross over with any other series, like literally anything with any anime, other cartoon, what would it be? Uh, Steven Universe, just to make people mad. Yeah. No. <laughs> Probably Bojack Horseman. That too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it would work, but it would be yeah. definitely interesting. Well, again, there's going to be plenty of need for extra characters, so yeah, there's... I actually did have one design that it was going to be for uh, Relia, but I just kind of put that aside. I'm like, oh, this will be someone else. She doesn't look good. I don't, I don't, she doesn't fit the character. Let's move her. She'll do something else. So, yes. I guess I'll continue on with my boring story. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, down at, down at Connecticut, we saw people all in uh, like pony shirts and hats and stuff. We're just kind of confused. We're like, what is going on? So uh, we finally get home. We're like, all right, you know what? Let's, let's watch this show. You know, we really enjoyed it. Then somehow I ended up stumbling upon uh, um, Jan's video of Picture Perfect Pony. And I was like, oh, what? That's so cool. Oh, some, some you know, non-show person made that? Wow. I was like, okay, I want to start doing this. And through a long process of just starting to draw things on paper and then moving and getting a tablet and drawing things a lot and finally figuring out what an animation program actually is because I'd never heard of it before. I thought it just came on <laughs> Yes. Tune boom. Because flash crashes. Yeah. But it's easy to crack. <laughs> that's, that's not something we advertise. <laughs> well, people will actually use flash for once. 
But, I mean, do you really want people to use Flash? Do you want to put them through that? <laughs> I don't. I don't recommend it. <laughs> and then somewhere down the road, I ended up meeting PD somehow. Hi. Yeah. Uh, he got me interested in doing things uh, frame by frame where you, know, you draw every single picture. So I kind of do that now, and I don't like using puppets anymore. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is like SK9's like first real um, attempt at like actually creating, trying to create animation, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, and, so... And um, rushing it out very... And rushing it out. It's a lot of work to be done, and that's why it's like a lot, <laughs> a lot of this panel is unprepared, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> but I got more caricatures, so here. Um, mustache, beard guy, glasses. He's looking down. Ah, you finally looked back up. I gotta fix your mustache. <laughs> Your mustache goes down a little bit. Mm. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> That's. Unless anyone has any other questions, I'm uh, again. I'm kind of. <laughs> I didn't flip. I didn't prepare. Everything has just been exhausting. We've been working until we got here. So it's <laughs> Good thing I'm here, otherwise this panel would be really boring. <laughs> yep. yeah. yeah. Um, for someone just starting out that has an interest in animation, what is a good program to use? Um, well, I mean, there's there's many different ones. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not that. <laughs> Actually, okay, so so animating, um, I'm gonna, I could just, like demonstrate it right here. Do you have a webcam? Um, no, I don't. Okay, so animating is really nothing more. I'm just gonna make a pony with its mouth open. The tongue. I was gonna add weird eyes to it so, uh, so I can get out quickly. So here you go. Here's the face right there. And then you just make a new drawing on top of it and it, Literally is just a flip book. So, oops, I screwed up on the eyes. I gotta make the nose again. All right, and close mouth. Alrighty, so I screwed up a bit. But just to show you, he's like, and that's literally all it is. And you just do that for like 10,000 times, and and you got yourself an animation. So um, that is frame by frame. Each frame that you see is a drawing. Um, a lot of animators, they first get up and they're like, you know, I'm going to get Flash and I'm going to go to DeviantArt and download the puppets. And, and um, that's great and all, but it really doesn't teach you anything. You're just uh, collecting assets and cutting and pasting other people's work together to fit your own. Whereas frame by frame, it just kind of stares at you in the face, just like, What's, why doesn't the character move right? All you gotta do is draw it. You can draw the character right. Because <laughs> if you don't draw the character right and he's like has to turn his head, if you don't draw the eye in the right place, you all of a sudden have like eyes like warping all over the face as the character turns, especially during like a, a visual gag if like another character says something stupid and the character's just like, What? <laughs> that has to be drawn right, and you don't really want your character's eye to go <laughs> Unless it's on purpose. Unless yeah. it's on purpose, yeah. It's in, yeah, they're so, just that shocked that their eye leaves their face. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, in other words, um, for someone starting out and, and just getting in, this is basically the, an example of the panel, because you're just starting out, trying to get in, um, put together this panel, um, and so it is. Uh, it's terrifying, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's it's a lot of work. Um, my suggestion would be if before you buy any software because it is expensive, um, I'd just go get like just a, a sketch pad and a pen and just take one character and draw it like 200 times. If you have absolutely no interest after that, it might not be something you want to continue doing. Well, I would, I would suggest doing it in the corner of the page, so then at the end you could flip through it and hopefully see them walk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, after that, try it again. And it's going to be better, because you probably learn things. And then after that, do it again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And it's like, um, so 
animation, I'm gonna tell, um, talk about it a little bit. Um, one of the best advice I've ever gotten with, uh, with art or animation or anything, it's like running a marathon, all right? And if you ever stood on the sidelines of a marathon, everybody has the same face, from the three minute milers to like the 20 minute milers, scragglers in back, everyone's just like, ah! Ah, oh, this hurts, my body aches, and that guy just passed me. He's probably having a better time. And that guy is currently going, oh, oh, why am I doing this? But then when you, then, so everyone in there is doing that. And when they cross the finish line, they're just like, I just ran 26.2 miles. And they're just ecstatic. They can't believe they, they pulled it off. That is art. Um, that's why you see artists who draw amazing picture going, oh, I suck, that guy's better than me, he can draw better. And, and it's not really until you take a step back and look at what you've created and what you've done is when you can realize, you're like, holy crap, like, my art last year was just garbage and compared to it now. <laughs> and so it always feels like that way. It's not until you take a step back and look. And a lot of times, um, you know, you guys ask anybody randomly off the street, do you want to run 26.2 miles with me? And they'll be like, no, <laughs> I don't want to do that. I'm afraid of what's going to happen. I'm probably going to have a heart attack. And that's the same thing that happens with new artists. You want to make an animation? No, I can't draw. I, everyone's going to judge me. So that's my advice to beginning artists. Just do it. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> yes? Uh, you said it takes a long time. I, I would like to know what your long time is. And then also, with this question, how do you get recognized by someone to, to make a full-time job? Um, the recognition is going to be, that's going to be like the hardest part that you're going to run into. Um, it's just kind of getting through people that you might know or might have met. Um, and just kind of getting it passed along, um, or just happening to get lucky when you post something on YouTube. I'm <laughs> pretty by. All right. Um, <laughs> I can also um, uh, talk about that. Uh, okay. So for the first question, a long time. Um, it is. Uh, okay. So let's say a fast artist. Um, if you ever watch an artist draw, and they make a fully cleaned up, colored, shaded drawing of a character. Um, in 12 minutes. That's, that's pretty fast, right? Great. Now do that 12 more times and now the character can have a walk cycle, like they're just walking continuously on a treadmill, but you have one second of animation. So, um, so 12 times 12 is one, yeah, 124. If you want a minute, it's, one minute is 1,440 frames. Yeah. So it's a long, when we say a long time, it is a long time. It's not like a, um, uh, a lot of times people, they will say, oh, hobby, you know, animation a hobby. I have a hobby. I, uh, I work on my car, you know, like tinker with it four hours every Sunday. And, you know, that's, that's a pretty good hobby. No, you'll get nothing done in animation. It is literally a commitment like a bodybuilder does. Um, they every day go and, you know, you just do it and work at it. And, like an athlete, a lot of times um, an animator has to warm up by just simple drawings before they can get into better concrete drawings. Is that, am I going off on a tangent here? Um, oh, yes, I just remember your second question. Getting recognized. Um, I could talk about how that kind of happens and getting recognized is just, you don't really realize it until it just happens. Um, and the only way to get there is to keep pushing at the art and trying to do the best you can do. But then one, eventually one day, like, I, I wear this hat everywhere around and I can't get anywhere on, on, uh, in the convention floor sometimes because people come up to me. Um, and it just, it just happens. That's why you gotta be nice to everyone. <laughs> so. Uh, Any other questions? Why it, okay. um, it oh, crashes see. and corrupts a lot. Okay, so imagine you have a pen, and, and you can draw with it, but the pen just 
randomly sometimes as you're working on like a very detailed drawing, it just goes bleh and spits out a whole bunch of ink all over your page, completely ruining your drawing. Would you ever buy that pen again, that brand of pen? Like if, it, if, if that was like a manufacturing flaw, I wouldn't. And that's what kind of flash does to your animation sometimes. You're gonna be like, I'm gonna do flash today and you draw a line and it crashes and then corrupts your save so all of your animation work just went poof. And that's why it's not a really good program. Flash. Uh, it's a pure mess of a software because it exists since more than 20 years and they yeah. tried to make it good at everything. So it's supposed okay, so to, yeah. Here's, um, uh, Flash is quickly going out the door. Um, DHX is actually switching to Toon Boom because they're sick of Flash. Um, Flash was made and programmed in the day when downloading a bitmap image from the internet took a significant amount of time. But then there's this other program that people found out with mathematical vectors you can get a lot more content through. You know, the Shockwave Flash file. And Flash, the program, was there and you could do it with it. So, bam, its popularity grew to a Kardashian level and everybody started using Flash because it was the only software out there. Um, and so it still exists today, but a lot of its techniques, a lot of its, the way it handles files, um, it's just woefully outdated. And that's why Toon Boom, um, the people who programmed Toon Boom, they actually sat down with an animation team and it was just like, what do you need? And it was like, well, we would like, if you can hold down Control and Alt, you can rotate the workspace and actually get the line that you want instead of, you know, being out of luck. So that's, that's my argument. A lot of, I, I'm pro Toon Boom. A lot of yeah. other people are pro for Lash, so. Well, yeah, when uh, we started the promo and you learned that you would need to use Flash for the animation. I cried. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I was with, with you and I felt so bad for you, but yeah. Um, so to give you an idea with the pony puppets, um, uh, with Flash, um, all the puppet parts come in little, you know, bits and pieces. Uh, if you move the head of the pony, the neck, the eyes, the hair, the ears don't come with it. You have to individually go through the list and select them in the layers so they move as a coherent object. And why is it that way? Why, why you can't parent layers in Flash? In Toon Boom, you can just select the head layer and move it and the eyes will come with it. So that's, that's another thing. Think that's, of playing with a paper cutout of your character. That's yeah. not glued together. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine you have like your, uh, um, uh, like the paper craft ponies, you see them in the shadow boxes. Imagine like you had those to animate with, you know, you had your camera, you had to move one, like South Park did back in the old days before they switched to Maya. Um, they moved the little papers and you know, like, hey, you know, <laughs> it's respect my authority when they play it back. Um, yeah, imagine none of those are pinned together and you move one and the eye goes like slightly off and that's basically Flash, whereas the other one, Toon Boom, it, you can pin them together and you have like, uh, aren't there like, like yeah, you, uh, it's as if you stuck little pins to them so when you move the butt, the entire body can come with it if you want, so. Is that covered? Did this just go, it sounded like it just go whoosh right over everyone's head. <laughs> it was a little detailed, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Most animation work in the industry is uh, contract to contract based. So you're hired on um, for a project and you're, you know, your contract is for that project. Um, a good studio will get you on the next project too when you work you know, well with the team. So once the project is done, um, you're rehired on for the next contract, you know, the next gig. Um, but if you're just a jerk to everyone and um, you know, and they don't like you, they don't have to rehire you on for the next project. So it's literally like what a, an actor does with bouncing from gig to gig. Um, it's kind of a feast and famine uh, life cycle um, because with, it's normally understood that with the contract um, as freelance gigs, you also have to be paid for the time in between contracts. 
stick out, you, you do a, a fantastic job, does that influence the size of your contract? Um, don't, um, okay, so, all right, I think the route you're, you're asking for, um, there is people who go, um, they see your work, they like your work, they like your style, and they want to hire you for their music video or their project and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's contract-based, um, and that's like a freelance thing. The other way um, to get in um, with like a professional studio, you uh, have to submit a demo reel. And the nice thing about animation is that there's no, um, you know, there's no smoke and mirrors. You lay it all on the table. Here's my work. This is what I can do and other animators will see it, and we're very, very nasty to each other. Like, we can be like, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, ooh, okay. And, you know, it's like fashion design, um, you know, like a professional fashion designer is just critiquing what someone else is wearing. Um, and yeah, it's very, it, it kind of exposes you, but you lay it out on the table, and um, they can see if you have skills or not. And so with a studio like DreamWorks or Disney, Pixar, that's the, um, uh, the route you'd, you'd have to go. But for other work, like if you're an independent one, um, like what Jan does, um, Jan Animations, he had his work out there. Um, just blew, you know, just blasted onto the scene with the uh, the pony, um, picture perfect pony, and a lot of people were just like, dude, like animate for me, like animate my OC, and then that's when Jan like, well, here's my list of prices. So, if, uh, but that being said, if you're doing animation for the recognition and to um, to get money, you're doing it for all the wrong reasons. Yes. Do you have a animation that you personally worked on? Oh, absolutely. The BronyCon opening ceremonies video. <laughs> that was definitely the best. <laughs> <laughs> Who has here had... Wait, can we screen that again? Because it's I, already premiered. I don't have it. Oh, you don't have it? Oh. No, I don't have oh, it. Oh. No. Wait. I might have it. Oh. Oh, oh. Who is here has not seen... went to opening ceremonies? Oh, wow, a lot of people. Wow. Okay. okay. You missed something epic. Okay, let's get well, I say that, but yeah, I'm kind of biased towards myself. <laughs> I kind of love myself too much. <laughs> yep. Yes. Was that frame by frame? Yep. Uh, no. no. I mean, it was with puppets. I mean, there was some. It, it's kind of hard to explain, but it wasn't. We didn't draw everything over and over again because there's, we wanted okay, to be sure. There's some style. scenes in that where we had to animate it so fast, the characters literally did not have legs yet, and we're just like, let's just put them at the bottom of the frame and make them walk like worm-like things. <laughs> no one's going to notice. Um, I don't know if I have my flashcard. You don't. Oh, uh, it's in my other backpack. Uh. If you missed it, go to closing ceremonies. Yeah, they will be <laughs> screening that again at closing ceremonies. <gasps> Wait, we don't have internet access. No. We don't. Oh, no, we don't. Unfortunately. Yes. Is that animation officially in C and D? Still in C and D. Yeah, he's. It's, it's okay. kind of over. I can actually talk a little bit about that because um, um, more in detail. What happened with Jan Animations? Um, he matched the show too closely and I actually kind of warned him about I was like dude like you really like matching the show like the audience is going to mistake um, uh, your content for actual you know legit content um, of the show and and the reason why so at first the C&D was kind of a mistake but um, if Hasbro spent time to overturn it um, they want it as a business. They want to get any uh, financial return on it, and it would op open up a legal loophole in the system that could be exploited, where anything that Jan does with the characters or anybody affiliated with him is um, backed up by Hasbro, and that's a very big like li liability for a studio and especially a um, a, a toy company um, to to have. So they just kind of took the safer route and been like, "Sorry, bro, you." Probably shouldn't have matched our style really closely. Oh no! Actually, uh, what he did was to use Flash to, to retrace over uh, screenshots 
to do a very, very, very close re uh, reproduction of the puppets that they use to do something very close. And the difference between what he did and what the show did was so similar, similar that yeah, a lot of, I find it ironic, a lot of um, artists are like, you know, why did Hasbro like C&D a Jan that's not fair and blah, blah, blah. And then the, the same person will turn around and be like, you can't do that with my character in my style. Nah! That's like basically what Hasbro just did. Like, dude, like you're using our characters in our style and people think it's yours. Like, no, yeah. that's intellectual property. As, yeah, if you go to his Tumblr, he's still getting con like questions or congratulations on getting Button in the show. Um, so there was that confusion. People think that... Yeah, Button Mash was not his design. Um, yeah, he, that belongs to them. They did have him in the show already. But, so. but the personality that Jan gave Button Mash, that um, is his own, and that is his own creation, which is, which is brilliant, by the way. Like, I absolutely loved it, and I was... I was, uh, um, for me as an animator and a professional animator, um, I, I was hurt when it finally happened, but it wasn't like, from, I knew it was kind of coming, I just didn't know when, because um, I could see it and I was just like, dude, like, it's really close to style. Um, but Don't Mind at Night is still up because that is something completely different. That's mashing uh, Minecraft with, um, uh, MLP, MLP, which won't even happen in the show at all, because um, that's, I mean, Microsoft owns Minecraft now, right? Yeah. Yeah, Microsoft <laughs> would be like, oh, you're going to pay me, Hasbro, if you want to use Minecraft. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's why that one's still up, because it is a parody, it, um, and people finding it can't really confuse it for anything that happens in the show. So that being said, it's much better to create your own style and stuff, because then people can be like, oh, I recognize that style, that's so-and-so's work. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, that's a lot more fulfilling. Um, okay, um, it is friendly, um, it's also competitive, it's, but it's like a group of like jocks hanging out and with tough love and you know, um, uh, where straight up, okay, so animation are really harsh with you, like Minty Root. <laughs> You're awesome at background characters, uh, not background characters, background environment camera pans and stuff, but that griffin that you drew yeah, it was, was so terrible. bad. <laughs> <laughs> I had to immediately take you off character design. Yep. Um, and that, that whole kind of thing comes because like, we want to help like, get, get him better. Like We're telling you that not because we just want to be mean, but we want to help improve upon that. I was yeah. feeling so bad when I... Uh, you just told me, are you okay, Minty? Yeah. Just... You're feeling all right. <laughs> this is turning into the panel that's supposed to be at 10 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're going to talk about the BronyCon opening ceremonies. Yeah. But they're doing something. Hi! Oh, she wants us to leave. <laughs> oh! Yeah, oh. Okay! So, and if... story's over! Yeah. Is there anything you missed? <laughs> Do you want to see it again? It's so... on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash PK9. You can watch it and descriptions and stuff. So, there uh, we go. If, if you want to hear m more about the um, Bronycon animation, uh, Sunday, 10 a.m., main hall, you're going to have a lot of fun. We have other guests, and yeah, we have a lot of stuff that we're going to.